When people buy a Tesla Model S, one of the biggest questions they have is whether they want to spend the $2,500 cost to upgrade to the factory premium sound system. That sound system adds more speakers and a subwoofer. If you instead choose to go with the standard sound system, the question you have is, can you approximate or upgrade your standard audio to a better sounding system for less than the factory cost of $2,500? That's what we're going to find out. The company Light Harmonic has developed two packages to upgrade the factory sound systems for the Tesla Model S. Their premium package is called the Model S .12P, and it includes an aftermarket 1200 watt premium amplifier, which is built by Light Harmonic, and speaker upgrades. That system is recommended to be professionally installed and costs a little under $2,000. The other system, which is for the standard audio Model S, is called the Model S .4D. That system replaces the four factory speakers in the doors with speakers that are specially built for Light Harmonic. At the time of this review, the system price had recently dropped from $1,200 to $1,000. So, the question is, for $1,000, which is less than half the cost of the factory upgrade, can I approximate, or at least dramatically improve, the sound of the standard Tesla audio system? Light Harmonic says that their upgrade is a plug-and-play type system. All you have to do is dismantle the doors, pop in their speakers, put everything back together again. To start the process, I'll need to dismantle the doors in the car in order to take out the factory speakers. But before I do that, I want to get some very basic benchmarks. I have a sound meter to record the decibels. I'm going to go ahead and put the audio at 5 to do these measurements. I have adjusted the meter to 70 decibels. Let's start taking things apart. The standard factory system consists of two speakers in the A pillars, two in the front doors, and two in the rear doors. Of course, taking all those apart is necessary in order to put in the new speakers. Luckily, Light Harmonic has provided a teardown guide on their YouTube channel. Well, hopefully this is the hardest part. I used a plastic tool to wedge down underneath there so that I could grab this insert. Uh, it has tabs on it. In the Light Harmonic video, it does not appear to have tabs, so mine was actually pretty hard to get out. But once I've done that, there is a 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter bolt hiding down there. Okay, with that bolt removed, next there are two torque screws hidden behind that plastic panel. Seems easiest to pop the leading edge of the panel by the front door rather than the back where those tabs are. So pull that handle, pop the front, comes right out, and there's the two torque screws. Now note that those torque screws are T30, T30s. So make sure you have the right tool. Okay, with those screws removed, I'm gonna go ahead and lower the window so that we have uh, more room to work to get the door panel off. Because I don't have an extra hand, I'm gonna let these guys show you how the door panel pops up. I'm gonna need a bolt. I'm gonna go ahead and take a nylon pry bar and go around this entire edge of the door panel. There's, it must be loose. Force. Make sure you don't break anything because mine was very tight along here and I had to go all the way around this bottom corner before it popped free. You want to be on the inside of this rubber seal toward the so interior. Now, have the door panel off, you see there are now they're going to go ahead wires. and disconnect a whole bunch of wires in here. Uh, I'm not really sure how some of these connectors work, so I've decided not to do that, but I will show you what I did. <clears throat> these connectors, are there's a whole bunch of them in here, and they're very tiny, and they're very fussy, and uh, I'm just uh, not interested in dealing with them. But I found, at least for the front door, if I pivot it and I rested it on a big wad of uh, fabric here, I can get full access to the speaker and its connectors without taking any of the other wires off. And in fact, Tesla gave me a little work light here on the bottom of the door. And basically, uh, they just, once you've undone the clip, out they come. Okay, I have the front speaker out. Here it is. I do want to point out, good practice whenever you're doing this, get yourself a bin to keep all these fasteners in. And uh, mark where you're, where you're removing things from. So, you know, you can see I have these marked as, you know, front passenger, which, which way goes front. And, uh, and I've also marked the speaker that I've taken out in case I ever want to reinstall it. I don't know why I would. Uh, but here's what it looks like when it's out. Uh, it's your typical factory speaker. Not particularly sturdy construction. This feels like heavily recycled plastic here. 
And uh, for those who, are, who know what they're looking at, there you go. It's a two-ohm speaker, and uh, it kind of does a little bit of everything. And that's all there is to it. When I get the light harmonic speakers here, they haven't arrived yet, we'll do a back-to-back -back comparison. Because of the test we're planning to do, and because the light harmonic speakers are not here yet, for now I'm just going to tack this side back together and move on to the rear. It's not entirely clear if the LH system is using the same speakers front and back, but one thing that is clear, having taken them out of the car now, is that Tesla is. At least for the standard audio system, the part numbers and everything else on the labels matches from front to rear. So I would say that they are using the same speakers front to back. Which is a good thing, because if I ever decide to go back, I'm going to need a new back speaker. Word to the wise, when you're popping the back door panels, which I've already kind of stowed for the night, right between the two faceters, right next to the speaker, is an alignment post of some kind. And that post, when the fasteners break free suddenly, is in a prime position to go right through your cone. So have a helper standing by and holding on to that panel for you. Okay, so it's day two. have my uh, Tesla Wardenclyffe shirt on and uh, the car is ready. And off the FedEx truck today, that box from Light Harmonic. So I'm going to crack it open, see what we got. Okay, so we're going to look at the construction of these speakers in a little bit more detail, but we'll just start with the first observations. There's the stock speaker and here is the Light Harmonic speaker. Let's just see how they stack up literally. We put them on the scale. So the factory speaker weighs in at, well, let's see, there we go, about half a pound. Alright, now let's compare that to the light harmonic speaker. Yeah, you heard that thump, right? Yeah, it's a lot heavier. Now as for construction, this is the stock speaker with an integrated clip, and it's it's a uh, plastic, and well, a lot of foam, and it's it's fairly thin here. And then here is the back, that size magnet. Now there's a foam backing here, which I don't know if you can see real well. Separate piece, so I might actually come up with some felt when I install the light harmonic ones. Uh, anyway, light harmonic has. Uh, a clip that does protrude a little bit, which is fine actually, a little bit more space is, is not a problem. And I can't set that one on its face like the factory speaker because the cone sticks out. So I'm just going to turn it over here and let you see the size of those magnets. You can make that out. Uh, it's a lot bigger. Like I said, it's a lot heavier. It's about five times heavier. So as I said, there is a uh, definite, like, soft layer here that the Tesla housing where it connects to the metal part of the door. Now the light harmonic one is just very very thick heavy metal and there's no installation instructions but I'm going to go ahead and assume that this is only going to help or do nothing. So I got a scrap of pretty thick uh, fleece or felt, I don't know what it is, something from my wife's craft drawer and I'm going to go ahead and, and cut some some areas where that will be connecting to the door, just so there's a little bit of isolation there. Uh, if you were really doing a proper installation, you probably would go ahead and dynamat the door, but since we're comparing speakers, not uh, installation techniques, I'm only going to do this minimal thing because really it really doesn't cost anything. All right, so we're here at channel 11, and we have our test rig set up, and tell me how you got it. Hey, what's up? I'm Joseph, and uh, what I do is I have a MacBook Pro plugged into an audio interface here, uh, which is running off of uh, some hardware EQ and then running through an amp, which then we have connected here. Uh, we connected the uh, LH speakers in series, uh, so they're running two ohms total, and then we connected the Tesla speakers also in series. Uh, which gives us a 4 ohms total. So the wattage on each channel is a little bit different, but uh, with the volume adjusted, it should be equal to uh, give an accurate sound. So we'll play a sound sample here, and hopefully we can get some differences. So.
pops out. So yeah, you can hear that the left side is a little bit more fuller uh, in its range. The Tesla side seems to bring out the highs a lot, so you'll get more crisp, you'll hear the shaker a lot more. Um, but the, the LH speakers are definitely uh, more low end and more mid range in the frequency response. background is the air conditioning in the car. It is so hot and humid that I had to put it on just to try and stop from, it's, it's like being in a sauna in here. It's just so hot. You know. Light Harmonic says that these are plug and play speakers. Indeed, the plug portion works, but I'm having a lot of problem with the mounting holes. The front speaker went in just fine, but the rear speaker is not. And uh, I have tried all three on this back door. I tried all three on the other back door last night before giving up. And here's the issue. When you line up these screw holes, and this does not have my felt like o-ring on it, uh, these are off on this side. Or you can do a combination of the top and one bottom or whatever, but you can't actually do all four holes for any of the three remaining speakers, so it's not a front to back thing. That's my first criticism of light harmonic. The mounting holes do not line up. What angers me, or frustrates me I should say, is there's no reason why they couldn't have made these flanges a half inch bigger all the way around so that if they were off you could just drill them out yourself because as it is I'm gonna have to drill that but there's so little material here who knows what's going to happen as far as is it going to get any real support and I can't actually put a washer there because it's it's so tight here but extra material would have at least allowed me that option. And then, they also could have just done slots. Because if you're only going to do four holes in a narrow uh, margin like this, you, you darn well better do it precisely so that it fits perfectly. Otherwise, you're just creating major headaches. So, do a little bit bigger around and do some slots. Because they don't have to be perfectly aligned, probably. They just need to be in there very close. Once I gave up trying to uh, use the original mounting holes on these speakers and just started drilling them, uh, I discovered that they actually are uh, plastic. Uh, they just look like metal, and I think the weight I was attributing to it being a, a well, mm. frankly a cheap Chinese casting type thing, like a Harbor Freight grade steel or iron ore, uh, was really just the weight of the magnet. So I've been adjusting my installation techniques. This store is done, uh, and this one I just finished, but as a result, I had to reinforce that particular hole. Um, this one I think will be okay, but those are the two I had to drill out. And I've been adding my felt flange just because I haven't heard any reason not to. And I feel like it's a little bit of dampening between the speaker and the metal of the door. And uh, sounds good on my tests. For the front doors, I was able to just disconnect the power that goes to the lock. And, uh, and then pivot the rest of it. And uh, you can see that the wires aren't stressed or anything like that. I just have to remember to hook up the lock again or else it won't work. For the back doors, I did have to trim around the speaker housing, which there will be pictures of, but I had to trim quite a bit because it wouldn't re-engage the, um, the fasteners. So there's my shavings there. You can see how much I took off of that inside of the panel. I'll show you again on the next door. I'm sure I'll have to do it on the other side as well. So that is, this side will be completely done as soon as I pop that all back together. And then I gotta do the back door on that side, and then I'm gonna add the flange to the one I already did on the front side. I'll be set. 
So here's a look at the speaker before I put it in. This is the back speaker. This is my felt flange that I put on here to, or, you know, kind of gasket, I guess, to keep the um, hard plastic of the speaker from shaking and vibrating, uh, making undesirable noises against the metal of the car. Uh, it'll be screwed on tight, obviously, with that in between. Here's the other modification I've been making to the door, which I showed you before, but here's the actual door card, as the Bruce would call it. This is the uh, passenger side rear door front of the car, back of the car. This is um, where the speaker housing will rest. And what I believe is happening is this sticks out quite a bit here. You can see that. And it's not very thick. And when I put the first one on, these fasteners wouldn't engage. So my deduction was that this was, because it sticks out so far, was possibly blocking and hitting that speaker. So I've trimmed the whole thing down on the other one. I haven't trimmed this one yet. And then uh, it popped on right away. So I can't imagine there's a whole lot of sound loss going around there. And I think that's just a lot easier than uh, fitting and refitting the door cards. So uh, getting closer to done. So just like before, uh, I'm going to be using the Alan Parsons project and doing samples off of that. First we're going to set this up so that it's the same conditions as last time. That means the equalizer zeroed out, the fade is all zeroed out, and we're going to set the volume at 5. All right, well, that's the uh, test there, best I can remember from what I did before. And um, hopefully there's some useful info. I know that's not the ideal listening place, but I only have so many hands. All right, I'm here at Generosa Coffee, which is where we have cars and coffee. I'm meeting a couple other Tesla owners here, and we're gonna compare the light harmonic sound to a standard audio Tesla and a premium audio Tesla, and see what the group think is on which is best. Let me turn down your 9.5 bass setting. I have, I have teenagers, they do that. I had it at 10. Ones. Yeah. Yeah. Still pretty yeah. 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 Especially considering 90% of the time you're using slapper anyway. Is this the way it's meant to be? I mean, it, it's like anything else. It, it sounds to me like it tends to make it extra bassy, but it muddies it up a little bit. So, if I want more bass, I can have more bass by fiddling with the equalizer. Right. Yeah. But it's, it's just like this having it in a home theater. So it's the same deal. Obviously, you don't have the most recent update where it's fixed for oh, the but I did get the most recent update and look what, look what they fixed. Minor fixes and improvements. Oh, this good. is from yesterday, a new one. Yeah. Thanks. Here's Bob. That really added to the uh, sound test, thanks for that. <laughs>
sounds fine. It does. Still <laughs> solid bass. Rumbleys up the back. As soon as I, as soon as yeah, I turn yeah, that course. around, now we're going. Now we're going to the next car. And then go to Michael Jackson because that'll be the good, good symbol. Like, yeah. And this has the shaker that we heard. Of. It's all shaker. Yeah. yeah. Again. And this is good bass too. So. <laughs> when they were fiddling with my wind noise, maybe they put a hole in mine, but I don't want to take the door off and check. Else I'll get the same door creak. Yeah, I definitely have a creak going on. <laughs> I'm standing there. Yeah. Wrap the arm. Tailgate test. Yeah. Won't you make yourself at home and stay with me? And don't you ever leave? Make yourself a mystery man. Don't you think you was that the high was a lot crisper with the LH and the, the bass was a little clearer. My assessment is that the standard sound is, is good and it has, it's a little tinny and the mids kind of come through a little bit but the, they kind of get um, muddied over by the high. So the highs and mids kind of compete with each other uh, and the bass comes through but it's it's low so it's like the bass is kind of underneath everything else. When we do the LH car the mids really come out. I mean they're they're the 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 highest sound that I hear are the mids and so the highs are kind of back a little bit more. The mids come out which is good in a lot of pop music uh, a lot of pop music that bump the mids and stuff and the bass comes through a lot more too. It vibrates you know, more of the car, more of the frame. And so for not extra volume, get you get more bass. Premium sound, I have to say, it sounds almost just like a studio. 
and it sounds like the studio reference monitors that I, I hear all the time. So bass comes through, real punchy, real crisp. Um, you get the vibration, but not necessarily the rattle. So you get the air vibrating, you know, it just it feels good. Um, mids come through great. They're right at the, at the you know, you know, bass, mid-level, highs. They're right at the mids where they need to be in the highs, but they're crisp. And those added speakers up front really bring together the sound. The one thing that I did notice was that, um, like Darren has suggested, is you, wanna, you want the sound more towards the back to kind of get the full, um, you know, the, the full spectrum of all the sound. So the premium sound, you move the, the sound back, you get more of the full sound. On the LH and the standard, you can have the sound pretty much at zero and it, it fills up. So I've put the speakers in the car. We've tested them in the studio. I've tested them with other owners. We've put it head to head to head to head with every possible version of the Model S that we could come up with. And what's the conclusion? There's no question that the speakers in the light harmonic sound system are better than the standard audio speakers or the speakers that are inside the cabin of the premium Tesla audio. The question is, what is it you want to listen to? If you listen to a lot of symphonic things or talk radio or uh, acoustic music or um, acapella, things like that, things that are, are higher in their tonal quality, horns, violins, things like that. Uh, or you listen to things at a more moderate volume level, say something that's five and below. Maybe occasionally you hit six, but you're never really going past halfway. The light harmonic speakers sound better than the premium sound system at those levels with that kind of music. No question. We all thought that the premium audio sounded very thin when compared to the other two cars, including the standard sound system without any modification, but especially the light harmonic sound system when the volumes were low. Where the premium audio shines is when you start getting into those higher volumes and the baser tones. When compared to the light harmonic system, the light harmonic system Part one is uh, very, 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 very good. It's much better than the standard audio. It definitely has a lot more bass than the standard audio. But right now, at part one only, when it comes to the loud, uh, thumping kind of songs, whether it's a you know, hard rock or one of these electronic bands like a Daft Punk or something like that, anything that you want to listen to, say, five above on the volume that has a lot of bass, the subwoofer in the premium sound system is what seals the deal and makes it the better overall sound system. So the answer to the big question of, is it worth it? Well, it, it depends. If you have the standard audio system and you're not satisfied with it for some reason, you absolutely should get the light harmonic upgrade. It's the easiest path to make your standard audio sound a lot better. If you have the premium audio system, at the moment you still have the best version overall of audio available in the Tesla. You might be able to get much better audio if you upgrade to Light Harmonic's premium audio upgrade kit because that will give you the same door speakers as the upgrade that we've tested here. And those speakers are better than anything the Tesla's putting in the cars. Where it gets a little tricky is the unknowns. So if you're going to buy a car now your very best bet for the very best audio and the very best value for your dollar is to get the standard sound and plan to upgrade the door speakers like I've done and then really hope that Light Harmonic comes through with their subwoofer kit which they're calling part two and that it is at least as good as any other subwoofer kit out there. The part two that Light Harmonic is making for their sound system combined with the improved speakers inside the car itself, will beat the premium factory sound system. No question. Almost any subwoofer is going to add what you need to get the very best result. If it comes in near the $1,000 price point that NBX is selling their subwoofer kit for the standard audio, then that would give you $1,000 for your speaker upgrade and $1,000 for your subwoofer. And if you do it yourself, that's where the costs stop and for $2,000, you have better audio than the premium factory sound. I think the bottom line is, is quite simply that if you have standard audio and you want something better, this is the better. This is what you want. For light harmonics purposes, certainly we'd like to see some installation uh, glitches removed. And we're also very hopeful uh, on my family's end 
that the part two will be reasonably priced come in below your competitors which would also then put it below tesla's price and very do-it-yourself friendly whatever that ends up meaning i don't know because there's definitely going to be some wiring involved at the very least i hope you found this review useful and uh thank you very much for watching for tesla Roddy, i'm matt simmons